everybody, thank you so, so much for tuning in. Today's video is an all Dollar Tree floating shelf, and this is actually inspired by a post Mr. Kate made a while back. It was this beautiful floating shelf that she made for a client, and I fell in love. So of course, I wanted to try it out using Dollar Tree materials. Now, if you wanna recreate this at home using materials from a hardware store, you are more than welcome to, but this is a Dollar Tree DIY, so I had to get a little creative with what I'm using. Anyway, I really hope that you enjoy this video and stick around by subscribing to this channel. Once you hit that subscribe button, we instantly become best friends. Did we just become best friends? Yep. And please go ahead and hit that notification bell so you know every time I post a video. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. For this project, I'm gonna be using these wall art plaques from Dollar Tree, and they come in two different sizes, the square ones and the rectangle ones. And the rectangle obviously makes a longer shelf, which is what I'm gonna use, but you can of course use the square or wood if you have a scrap piece of wood at home. So I'm gonna turn these upside down and I'm gonna bond them using E6000. By the way, I will leave that link below for that key. It saves me so much E6000. I'm still using the same tube from a few tutorials ago. So once I add a generous amount of glue, I'm gonna push it up against each other, making sure it's aligned. And then I'm gonna add some binder clips to make sure that it's nice and tight. And I'm gonna let this dry for 24 hours before we secure it some more. So now that it is completely dry, I'm going to remove my binder clips and as you can see, when you lift it up, it's nice and secure, but we are going to add some extra security with this Dollar Tree hardware set. It brings nuts and bolts and what we're going to do is make two holes and the drill bit that I'm using is the same size as the screw. So this is just so it doesn't collapse when you add weight to the middle. It's just a little bit more security. Even though E6000 is strong, we still wanna make sure that our belongings do not come crashing down. So now I'm just going to add the screw and make sure that everything is nice and tight. And I highly recommend that you do not skip this step because like I said, E6000 is very strong, but if you wanna be able to add weight, this is important. So now that I'm done with that, I'm gonna flip this over and I'm horrible at getting measurements right. So this is a little hack. I got a one by one sheet of paper and I pierced a little hole with it using a hole punch. And I'm gonna use this as a guide to make my markings. That way all of my shelves have the holes in the exact same side. So basically I'm going to align this with each corner and make my holes. And even though the hole is not perfectly in the middle, all of your holes are gonna be in the exact same side if you're making more than one shelf. So this is such a lifesaver. If you suck at measuring, I always get measurements wrong. So this was perfect. So now that you have your markings, you wanna go ahead and find a drill bit that is a little smaller than your rope so that it can hold on to things. So this is where I'm going to be drilling and I'm just doing this off of the edge of my table. So this is what your holes should look like and even though it looks a little bit raised, it's going to be just fine because we're gonna fix that in just a bit. And this is what it looks like on the back side. Even though you have those little corners, it drilled through perfectly. So now I'm gonna take a little sanding block from Dollar Tree and I'm gonna sand that down until it's nice and smooth. And I'm also gonna go ahead and sand the entire thing a little bit just so that my paint sticks to this perfectly. Once I am done sanding, I am going to wipe this down before painting. And I just used a chalk paint that I've had around the house forever. And I made sure to paint the bottom as well as the top. And for the rings that I'm gonna use, it's these book rings from Dollar Tree. And my nails are different here because this is from another tutorial. But basically I just took some Dollar Tree twine and wrapped it all the way around until I had the entire thing covered. Now, of course, you can totally skip this step and just keep the rings normal, but I think it looked a little bit more cohesive.
Once it's completely covered, I did grab a lighter and burn off all the extra fuzzy pieces just so it looked nice and put together. This totally changes the look of the rings and it totally changes the look of the entire shelf to be completely honest. I ended up using the rest of the rope from my previous tutorial, so it was 12 feet, which I had cut in half and then folded those in half, so I had two equal pieces. And once I had those two equal pieces, I made my marking where I wanted my shelf to fit. And the marking is pretty important. So now I'm going to put my ring through all the way up, and I'm going to do this to both of my rings. And once I have my rings, what I'm going to do is wrap the bottom in some tape just to make it a little bit easier to put in through my shelf. Because remember, I did drill the holes a little bit smaller um, on purpose. So once I have all of the tape, I'm going to start to plug these in. So as you can see, this is going to take a little bit of work because you're going to have to screw it in. But once you get it in, make sure you stop pulling right where you see the little marking that you made. So once you see that marking, just go ahead and pull to exactly where that is, and you're going to do that to the other side as well. And as you can see here, I'm just taking it down to where the orange is covered. I'm going to do this to both sides and then I'm going to secure the bottom. To secure the shelf, I'm going to go ahead and make a very basic knot, but when I'm tightening the knot, I'm pushing down so that the knot ends right up against the shelf. This way everything is aligned and you don't have one that's a little higher than the other. But again, you can always undo the knot and keep playing around with the placement. As you can see here, they are right up against it. So I actually ended up not having to redo them. But you do want to use a leveler once you put this on your wall and you'll see in just a bit. To mount this onto your wall, I highly recommend using hooks that are drilled into your wall, but you can also use heavy duty command hooks, but I highly recommend adding L brackets to the bottom of your shelf. I went ahead and used a leveler to make sure that my shelf was secure. And then I added my second shelf to the bottom. It was a lot easier to add it while it was mounted to the wall. And bam, I have a beautiful, affordable $8 shelf. If you like this video, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up and thank you so, so much for watching. Till next time.